To be aware is the greatest inner revolution. Being aware means you are not influenced by any influencer. Being aware means you don't need to blindly believe an idea about divinity or spirituality because you start to experience your own divinity, your own awareness in its most raw form. Being aware cultivates an effortless conscious contact with your intuition, with your courage, and with your silence within. Being aware also leads to disappointing the society, culture, religion, family, and every element who wanted you to live their idea of life. Being aware is all about destroying the illusions of goals in life and letting your life be a goal in itself. In this podcast, I am going to share the three states of meditation that I have experienced in my own journey very closely. These three states start from bliss and cultivate their strength on truth and finally conclude and meet the consciousness. I am hopeful that you will be able to resonate and take something for your own meditation path through this podcast episode. I am Chandresh Bhardwaj and this is Break the Norms. So I met someone this week who has been meditating for almost 10 years. And when she mentioned her journey of 10 years, she also mentioned a lot of troubles, a lot of stress points, a lot of stories that still disturb her and i had to ask her that if you have been meditating for 10 years a lot of these troubles should have been absolutely gone from your life so i'm really curious to know if you are doing the wrong mantra or if you are meditating in the wrong direction and then she started sharing what meditation really means for her and what kind of meditation she has been doing and one thing really fascinated me was this particular meditation routine that she has been following on and off for 10 years so there's this group of ladies she's one of them and they all go to this meditation teacher who guides them through a visualization meditation technique and every week she tells them to imagine a certain fruit a certain flower a certain animal at at one point or even ocean universe so she guides them imagine if you are a red rose how would you bloom imagine if you are a dolphin how would you swim in the ocean imagine if you are a fox how would you survive in the jungle so she takes them through all possible imaginations and on certain days she tells them this week you are cucumber so imagine yourself as how a cucumber would survive and i asked her what are you this week and she said oh this week I am apple. I said apple from Silicon Valley, the laptop company or apple as in fruit. She said no, I'm I'm red apple this week. So we went on discussing various imaginations, various narratives and stories that she has learned from uh this meditation group. And I had to mention it to her. This is uh let's not call it meditation this is a great visualization spa kind of experience and it might give you a great uh relaxation at one point and i asked her for how long do you feel relaxed and she said oh i feel relaxed you know as long as we are meditating in the group and as soon as we leave the group we start to feel a certain stress and eventually the mind takes over eventually the daily drama of life takes over and then we are no more feeling blissful and then i asked her is there a particular motivation why you go to this meditation on and off for last 10 years and she told me her biggest motivation has been happiness she could not find the happiness through her marriage through her children she could not find it through her career so she was hoping this meditation will give her that happiness and uh in her own words it's not been the most 
joyful experience and i was not even disappointed or surprised because what she explained was not meditation and that's the tragedy with so many sincere students today they all have been meditating and they all have been told this is meditation and yet they are not experiencing the, the transformation they're not experiencing the deeper bliss because what they're doing is not meditation it's almost like if you have never tasted italian food or indian food and you go to this neighborhood restaurant which publicizes themselves as indian restaurant or italian restaurant and you eat the food and you eat there almost every other week after 5 years that will become your definition of indian food until finally one day you land in india and you realize what i was eating was just bs version of indian food <laughs> the real indian food is what i'm eating right now in india i mean i have to use the food example because um, i just had lunch so i'm still feeling the food uh, and i had indian food today in lunch and also i take retreats uh, to india i've been doing that for 10 years and this this has been a very consistent experience uh, with all the students who land in india eat the indian food and they realize wow this food is absolutely so different than what i have been eating in new york in london or in in la although i, I have to say Canada has really good Indian food. So if you happen to travel to Calgary, Toronto, Vancouver, uh, definitely try the Indian food. But yeah, let's not take this podcast into the best Indian food available. So I'll come back to the point of this episode, the three states of meditation. So when I listened to her story, uh, I shared that with my father, my guru also. And both of us were discussing how the essence of meditation is slowly losing its truth its essence its foundation and i don't want to uh, say that every teacher out there is doing that not at all i mean there there are so many sincere students and so many sincere teachers but if you have been taught in a certain way you will never know that you were doing it in the wrong way all right so my motivation with this podcast today is to give you a certain glimpse into understanding meditation and understanding it through your own experience what i call the three states of meditation this is basically coming from my own experience with my own journey but also the journey uh, that i've been taking with my clients and students for 10 years now and i started experimenting this particular template with a lot of sincere seekers who want to study with me and i was very surprised and and pleasantly surprised how this template started to heal them how this template started to take them into a deeper journey of meditation so what i'm going to share with you i do hope that you you are able to connect this understanding of meditation with your own meditation path and i'll be curious to know your feedback So the first state of meditation starts with bliss. This is a very interesting state where most people get attracted toward meditation. And one of the main reasons they get attracted toward meditation is the search for happiness, search for bliss. It's almost like if you're hungry, your biggest problem is food, but the moment you consume the food, then 50 other problems may show up. but while you were hungry the biggest problem the biggest motivation was from where to get the best food and when i come across people who have never meditated but they're going through stress they're going through some anxiety in life they're going through some panic situation in life their biggest motivation to meditate to seek spiritual help is joy bliss happiness and whatever guarantees them happiness they get attracted toward that they'll invest their time money energy into whoever promises them a certain taste of happiness and a lot of people get into meditation when they're going through stressful times and they are hoping that meditation will bring them out of stressful times and i've said it countless times and i'll say it again when you're going through stressful times that's not the best receptivity in you to meditate because you are 
blocked from everywhere. The best time to get into meditation is when you are in love, when you are happy, when you are joyful. But that's when a lot of people don't even think about meditation. I sh- share this very often within my own family. Uh, I tell them when my clients are happy, I don't hear from them for months or years. But when they're not happy, I start getting texts from them. I start getting emails from them. And uh, sometimes I feel, is that person pissed off with me? I haven't heard from him or her in a while. And then I hear from them and I realize they have been very happy for the last two years. And the reason they are reaching out again is because now they're not happy. Something is not moving well. It's like, you know, you don't see a doctor when you're healthy, but you start looking for them when you are, you know, sick, when you are ill. But again, the right time to seek the spiritual teacher, doctor, your wellness expert is when you're going through good times, because then your strength is different. Your energy is so receptive and you can absorb and build your foundation in such a powerful and organic way. So number one point is do not wait for a certain disaster to happen uh, and don't let that disaster motivate you into meditation. You rather get into meditation before any disaster happens so that when the actual disaster happens, you are not panicking and you have enough strength to face it fearlessly and you have enough strength to face it with courage. In this state of meditation where bliss is the ultimate motivation, things are very shaky. There is nothing firm because you may feel the bliss after 30 minutes of meditation and you start to feel maybe this is it. I'm going to be happy forever. But next morning you receive a text or you don't receive a text from someone you were expecting. And again, the mood goes back to just sad, depressed you go through a lot of fluctuations in this state. You go through a lot of emotions in this state and most of your emotions are on the surface. You are afraid to dive deeper into any emotion. It could be pain, pleasure, happiness, sadness. Everything is on the surface. And the meditations you're doing in this state, they give you temporary doses of bliss. It's almost like you have a headache and you keep on taking Advil or certain medication, but it's not going to fully remove the cause. It's only going to cure the symptom and that only for a short time period. In this state, anger and ego are very much active in you. And since they are active, they're going to block your receptivity. They're going to block the channels of wisdom in you. So you only seek out meditations in this state, which makes you feel comfortable. You only seek out teachers who make you feel comfortable. You do not go into the meditations or the teachers where, where you are challenged, where you are, you know, motivated to get out of the comfort zone. And that's why I'm very afraid of this state when people are going through the state i get concerned for them because i i fully know this is a very shaky very weak state and one thing could happen and it can make you feel that you are enlightened and some negative thing could happen and it could make you feel that meditation just doesn't work because you have not done enough work to really know how powerful or beautiful the meditation really is. You are basically inspiring yourself through books, through short meditation sessions online or in yoga studios, but you have, haven't dived deeper within. Also in this state, people go through lots of different meditation schools. There's a lot of shopping happening of crystals, gurus, books, audio apps, podcasts. You're trying to listen to everyone and you're just making yourself confused. In this state of bliss, in this state of meditation, when you're seeking the bliss, the urge for food, sleep and sex, they show up very strongly at times and you almost feel no control over them. But again, when you meditate, you start to have a little taste of wisdom. But again, it only lasts for a very short time. So my first question is, Do you feel you are in this state of meditation where you are only meditating for bliss, for relaxation, for peace? 
And does any of the symptoms that I mentioned relate to you? If yes, here's what I would recommend that you can start doing. <laughs> Guided meditations in this state are all right. You could start to meditate through the guided meditations, which makes you feel your emotions within, which make you feel uh, your joy within, which make you realize that your joy has to come from within you. It cannot come from your partner. It cannot come from a dating app. It will not come from money. It will not come from any external source. The happiness, the joy has to come from within you. So choose the guided meditations that kind of challenge you, that give you a new perspective on life. Listen to people who also challenge your conditioned beliefs. And stay away from people who are only saying yes to everything that you're talking. Stay away from people who continue to make you feel almost too comfortable in your conditioned beliefs. In this state, you really have to stay alert, stay aware that you don't get infatuated, that you don't get seduced by the shallow surface uh, spirituality that's out there and that you really challenge yourself into experiencing what is right for you. In this state, I highly recommend that you start building a happy and healthy relationship with your breathing. Invest at least 15 to 20 minutes every day in just breathing mindfully, in being in complete silence and going through mindful breathing, going through guided meditation, even going through music. If you like to dance, allow yourself to dance freely, almost as if you as a dancer is gone and only dance remains as you meditate. If you like to sing, allow yourself to sing so passionately that you as a singer is gone and only the singing is there. Only the music, the poetry is there. In this state, it's very important that you express your anger, express your love, express your pain, express your pleasure. Because if you're not expressing the pain fully, you're not going to absorb the pleasure fully also. If you have not listened to the recent episode, Why Spiritual Growth is Painful?, I feel you should listen to it because this episode will make even more sense. Because in this state of meditation where bliss is so important, you have to deal with a lot of pain. You have to deal with a lot of unresolved issues, unresolved narratives. We continue to hide things under the carpet, but there has to be a time when they need to be out. And that moment is not at all blissful. But that's where the real challenge is. That's where the real twist in the story happens. It's the best plot twist you can expect from your journey of meditation. But if you continue to go through powerful, uncomfortable guided meditations, if you continue to go through the right discipline, this state starts to open up many more layers. It starts to open up so many doors within you. And although... I do not recommend using any mantra in this state, at least in the beginning. But if you have been meditating for at least three months through six months on a consistent basis, then you could start with the mantra Soham, S-O-H-A-M. This mantra simply means I am that. It means I am that awareness. I am that consciousness. It's a very powerful mantra. And I recommend this mantra to those who have been meditating for at least six months or so. And allow yourself to absorb the power of this mantra. Absorb what this mantra is doing within you. What exactly this mantra is unfolding within you. And if you continue to sail through bliss, if you continue to sail through all the challenges that are showing up and you're bravely facing them all, and if you work with a spiritual teacher, discuss with them, this is what's happening and what you should be doing. And if all goes smoothly in this first state, then you will be invited slowly, gently to the second state of meditation, which is the state of truth. In Sanskrit, we call it truth satya. For some reason, I love the sound of it. Satya it simply means truth. 
in this state you have already gone through so many powerful realizations one of them being about happiness that happiness is not going to come from anyone outside of me you have experienced it before you walk into the state where exactly your fear joy bliss is coming from you have already tasted your self doubts so once you know all of those dramatic points in your life then there are bigger challenges that you start to wonder about then there's bigger curiosity that starts to show up for you and in this state of truth you start to ask yourself who am i really in this universe what am i doing here what exactly is my purpose do i have a purpose you start to question everything that you have been given in your life and if you remember the tag line of my book it says questioning everything you think you know about god truth life love and sex because i truly started to experience personally this state in a very powerful way i still remember i started to meditate for very different reasons and if you're interested in knowing the reason i'll give you a brief idea of it my motivation behind meditation was to gain psychic powers was to open my third eye and really become one of those yogis and gurus who can read the minds of people and really do some really you know interesting crazy mystic things and as i started to meditate i started to realize that life is so much more than just being mystic life is so much more than just having psychic powers and i was by the way in 8th or 9th grade by the time i was cooking up all these ideas in my head so as i left the high school my motivations changed uh, also i feel when i lost some really important people in my life the bigger motivations started to show up and it was i still remember after i lost few important people in my life that's when i really started to understand what really happiness is and i started to question everything i knew everything i was told about divinity about life and death about love and sex and i had to question all of that and the state of truth really became the most important and profound state of meditation in my life it was in this state that i started to meditate all night at times and i was constantly asking questions not just within my own head but also within my meditations and the answers were showing up the answers were showing up in ways that i was not expecting the problem is in the first layer of meditation we are so comfortable with the known in that state of seeking bliss we only want the known and familiar experiences and if anyone tells you you should be experimenting with this meditation you build a wall around you i have heard some of the most successful and famous meditation teachers who are extremely rigid about even talking about any other meditation technique and they close themselves if something is not scientific enough they close themselves if if something is not fulfilling their expectation and that's not really again meditation enough because the true essence of meditation will open you up it will make you feel more accepted it will help you cultivate more sense of self acceptance so in the state where you are going through the truth you start to become open to all the fears all the doubts around you you start to open yourself up to everything that's challenging you and you don't get offended you don't build a wall you simply stand there bravely and you start to meditate on why exactly this is happening to me am i attracting this am i creating or radiating certain vibrations that this is happening within me you stop being a victim in this state because you are going all out there to understand what your truth is you start to question the the rigid structure of relationships you start to question why money triggers people what happens after death what was happening before my birth you start to go really deep into really important and powerful questions 
And I feel this is one state where you need the hand of a guru, where you need a right spiritual guidance. If you don't have it, it's very easy to get lost in this state. It's very easy to become full of ego in this state. I have come across people super genius, super curious who get lost in this particular state and they build this interesting illusion around them. And slowly and steadily, the quality of their life, the quality of their happiness and awareness starts to lose its grip. But I highly encourage you, if you feel you are slowly moving from bliss to truth, or if this is the state where you are in right now, start to put a lot more time in your daily meditation practice. When you just start to meditate, 10 minutes, 15 minutes are okay. But as you start to evolve... And if you're really ambitious about finding your truth, if you're really curious about going deeper in your consciousness, you've got to invest more time, more energy in your journey. And when people are confused about it, I basically ask them to meditate on how much they value their existence. Do you feel uh, that you are worthy of all this investment in your journey? That's where you will know that I need to put more energy and more time in my spiritual path. Because if that's sorted, everything else will also resolve in its perfect organic alignment. If you feel you are in this state of seeking the truth, you could start meditating on certain questions. One of my biggest favorite is, who am I? Who am I is powerful because... It basically questions your mind. It questions all the doubts, all the insecurities, all the jealousy, comparisons, all the narratives about how a life should be. It starts to question the labels that you are attached with, the labels that make you feel uncomfortable. But the secret to extract maximum out of who am I is by not expecting the perfect answer. There is no perfect answer to this question. As you continue to meditate on who am I, the mind will show you all the labels. The mind will reveal all the dirty stuff that you are hiding under the carpet. The mind will also reveal a lot of hopeful stuff that you want to decorate more, that you want to build more. But don't let any of that delude you. Your task is to remain a witness to everything that you are seeing as a result of who am I. Your task is to simply observe without judging any of that. So continue asking yourself, who am I? And continue seeing and witnessing everything that shows up. Eventually, the mind shuts down because it doesn't have enough labels. Eventually, it doesn't have anything to offer you. And then the mind dissolves, the questions dissolve. And what starts to open up is your infinite awareness. What starts to open up is the ultimate highest wisdom in you. And that's where the doors of the next state of meditation starts to open up. It's the state of consciousness. It's the state of cosmic awareness. There are so many fancy labels I can continue to mention, but I'm not a fan of using the fancy labels. I'm biggest fan of giving you a certain experience. I'm biggest fan When we let go of the comfort zone and dive deeper into what's right for us, what we need to grow in life. In this state of meditation where your ultimate connection with highest awareness starts to build up, there are many magical things that start to happen. The attachments are fully dropped in this state. You start to experience the mantra, Aham Brahmasmi, which means I am the state of awareness. I am extension of universe and universe is extension of me. This mantra continues to reveal so many powerful experiences for people. In this state, you have already disappointed a lot of people, people who have been expecting that you will fulfill their idea of success, their idea of life. They're already disappointed. But you're also very respectful of their disappointment because you know that they are acting the best from their state of awareness. So you're not offended or angry with them. You simply know that they just don't know enough. They don't know enough to 
just see where you are going and you have compassion for them you have blessings for them and you continue to move into your own cosmic journey in this state in this state of meditation you start to witness the body the mind the awareness itself in this state of meditation the suffering starts to melt away the pain is there but that doesn't bother you in fact you receive the pain gracefully you receive all the lessons of life with complete grace also in this state you fully realize the ultimate lesson of life that spiritual truth is not cheap it's not going to come to you just with 15 minute of meditation every day it's not going to come to you by watching a youtube video five times a day but it's going to come to you when you show up for life when you go through all the turbulence all the challenges and you start to have this ultimate affair with divinity this state is obviously my favorite because i feel this is where the drama of life the fear of death the fascination and infatuation with all other forms of life start to make sense and you start to have a very much alertness and awareness of why things are happening with you and why you don't need to get attached to all, all of that in this state uh, you don't indulge any more you don't renounce things any more either you simply become a witness to all and i want you to know in this state you don't become hateful toward money or you don't start worshiping poverty i'm mentioning it because a lot of people feel in the higher states of consciousness you start to hate money or you start to run away from money or pleasure that's not how it works but what happens in this state you just start to become aware of money food sleep sex and all these things they stop dominating you you start to control them in the most powerful way they are no more navigating your life but you are navigating them you are directing your awareness you're directing your desires your greed and your ego to work for you they are not making you work so it's very important to understand how everything is still within you but you just have a different perspective a different outlet for all the things in this state you are absolutely a conscious choice maker you fully know what's happening with you how you need to make the most of it and you start to cultivate your reality in a very effortless way you stop depending on any outside source so in conclusion you simply have to reflect within and understand where exactly you are in your meditation is it the seeking of bliss the seeking of happiness romance love in life or is it about the search for truth and you're willing to do the work that it takes for you to experience the ultimate truth or are you moving deeper into the states of higher consciousness and that's your ultimate goal i do have to add a disclaimer that in the first state of bliss it's all right to work on your own through the apps or the books or the youtube videos but as you start to go deeper in the first state itself do not experiment too much but rather work through a guidance work with someone who knows what they're doing because we all have the wisdom the treasure the strength within us but it takes someone to guide us it usually requires the guidance the clarity of someone who has already been through that path and who can hold your hand make you fully independent and then step back so today your homework is to simply meditate and go deeper into where your state is and start doing the work because you need to honor your existence you need to bloom deeply and abundantly on that note i'm going to end this podcast today thank you for listening and if this episode resonates with you definitely leave a review that would help the podcast to become more visible and i am putting new retreats new events on my website cbmeditates.com and that would also have the information on india retreat hopefully some of you can join me there thank you for listening talk to you soon 
I hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness, light, courage, passion and so much more. Please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms. I am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast.